Howdy again, it's Mr. Pete, and I'm starting a new video series here. I'm not sure how many parts will be necessary, and I don't know whether to make these videos short or long. You know, some people make incredibly difficult, complicated projects, and they do it all in 12 minutes. Some of them, some of them without any narration, and they seem to go over real well, and mine are so long. And, cumbersome. They take many parts. I like to break them up or people won't watch all of them. So this will be two or three or four parts. I don't know until we get started here. Although I did make a prototype of it. Well let me tell you what we're going to do and how it all started. I get a lot of my project ideas from viewers and this one is no different. I got an email from one Mr. Chris Potter and he said, uh, this would be a good item for your What Is It series. Uh, I'm not sure what it is. I found it in a toolbox. And I said, well, that appears to be a set of swivel vice jaws. And here he shows it on a piece of graph paper to give me an idea. And there it is in three parts. He said, do you know what this is? And I said, well, yeah. And then uh, we corresponded. I said, can you send me a measured drawing? And he did. And it's not a bad sketch at all. It's on graph paper to scale. And from that, uh, I made a couple corrections. And uh, he sent me a revision. And then there's a sample of what it does. It holds a, a tapered piece in a vise. So from there, this is what happened. So then I got a hold of my friend in New York, and his name is Kevin Chiampi. I think I got that pronunciation right. And he's done some other drawings for me and does a, such a beautiful job. So a couple weeks later, uh, there it is. Uh, there were several revisions, but I did send him the original sketch or a picture of the sketch, and then it made a few changes as we went along the line. Now this drawing will be available to everybody on my heap. And uh, Joe Hildreth is the one that is sponsoring that. And some of you have already looked at that. I have 10 projects on there so far with links and with the drawings. So this is a collaboration. And thank you very much to these three people who were an inspiration and a help. I'm sure that many of you out there have either bench vices or drill press vices that have a swinging or swiveling jaw such as this and that's permanently mounted in there and of course the purpose is so that you can hold a tapered piece in the vise. Pretty neat. Here's a vice jaw I've had for many years. I do not know what vice it actually belongs with. It is cast iron. It is not machined. It's very rough, but it would work as well for that purpose. Actually, I never have used it if you want to know the truth, and I think you do. You know what? This is a 3-inch Palmgren vice, as you can see. And here is the prototype of the set of jaws that I'm going to make. And I have shown this in other videos, I believe. And in fact, I did a video already on how to make serrations. Matter of fact, I did two of them. One on the shaper and one on the milling machine. And you probably didn't see that because not many people watched it. But see, that would fit in there as such. And you can hold your tapered work. Pretty neat, huh? Well, this is probably something you will not need, even if you live to be 120. But it's a fun project, and join me in making this if you want. All right, what are you going to learn by making this, if you have never done these operations? And there's some interesting operations. Again, uh, making the serrations, making tapers, locating and making a half hole. Actually, it's less than a half hole so that everything lines up. That's a fairly good challenge. So that's the, the first part we're going to make. And as simple as this little piece is, to make it accurately is, again, a bit of a challenge and fun. So we got milling work, 
And we've got lathe work and, uh, if you would want, shaper work shown in that other video. And I'll give you links to those videos. It would be helpful if you would always look in the description because I do put notations and links in there from time to time that may be useful. I have already prepared the pieces of steel and this is just cold drawn steel 1018. It would be nice to make it out of tool steel then you could harden it. If enough people would watch this I may conceivably uh, uh, carburize it, uh, uh, case harden it in another video but I doubt that that will happen. But this steel is one inch by three and an eighth and it's five eighths thick. Now you can buy steel that size but I ended up taking it out of a bar. This was long and cut those out of the bar. That itself was fairly tedious but I'm certainly not going to show any of that because these are all ready to go. Let's talk about the order of operations and I suppose you could do it in any order that you wanted but I'm going to make the holes first then I'm going to make the serrations and then finally the angles. A lot of milling on this. There's probably no reason in the world why you couldn't make this three inches instead of three and one eighth. I'm simply copying and following the sample that Chris gave me. I, I really didn't vary from that at all. And I'm not going to mention the drawing all that many times in this uh, video, this demonstration. But if you can follow this, and you will need to study this. Print it out and study it. And you'll find out that uh, these are not half holes. They're less than half holes. And why? See, that fits in there nicely. so that we end up with that little space right where my thumbnail is. Otherwise it's not going to swivel. So that's less than half a hole. The small bore is 5 eighths. No, take it back. The small bore here is half inch. The larger one is 5 eighths. So that's what we're going to start out by doing, is making this and I'll just show it to you in one half. Let's step over to the bridge board if you will. Take a look at the setup here now and it, yours will certainly vary depending on the size of your vise but I have right here a half inch parallel. I have here a pair of Sterrett V blocks and I'm going to put the workpiece in there. Remember it's three and one eighth like that and before I tighten it I'm going to take a parallel, a block of any kind, and I'm going to push the work right up against that and then tighten the vise down thoroughly. Now that leaves me a pocket in there, plenty of room to get in there with the end mill and the parallel raised the work so I'm not going to strike the vise. So you see I have a little reason for almost everything that I do. You know what, you can do this all with layout. I'm doing it by touching off here, finding the uh, the end exactly, and remember that the stock is 3 and 1 eighth, half of that is 1.563, so I will touch off the diameter right here, as you know, is 200,000, so I will in fact move in 1.663, and I'll be looking at the digital readout, of course. I'm in the middle of the work lengthwise on the x-axis, and now I need to find my position in the y-axis which after studying the drawing is 219,000 sin, which is really a 30 second less than one half inch. And now I will move in to 19. 
right there and that has locked the table rather in both directions and I'm simply going to drill this using the quill you could of course raise the knee as well so let's try it And that's all there is to it. I do believe you're better off feeding vertically as if you're drilling rather than coming in from the side. Also you can take it in more than one pass. That is back out a little bit in the y-axis, take a roughing cut and then move back in for a finishing cut. Now I'm not done. I'm going to change cutters, put in a 5 8 end mill and counter bore it as you see there and in this view and it's 125 thousandths deep. Now I just changed end mills from this half inch carbide to a 5 8 high speed steel. I'm going to come down and touch the work, lock the spindle and I'm going to feed up 125 thousandths with the knee crank. Now I have not moved the position of the work or the table. The digital readout still reads 0, 0, 0, both X and Y. Now I will remove the work and thoroughly clean out the vise. I'll be back with you in a second. Okay, that's what the counter bore looks like and of course I need a counter bore right here. How am I going to do that? Well, remember I made a big deal about these pieces being the, a certain length so that this would be in the middle and uh, everything's cleaned up now so I'm going to flip the work over on the parallel as such put these back in place as such and then it's very important now that I adjust the work up to the stop tighten it and now I'm ready to uh, counter bore the other side <laughs> okay I'm counter boring the other side at 125 thousandths deep and now let's see if this prototype pin fits and it fits like a glove now it's important that there be some clearance here. I do not want the pin to stick above the jaw. So there's a few thousandths difference as noted on the drawing. Now I'll go ahead and make the other one off camera. See you soon. Okay the half holes turned out rather nicely. Notice that I put index marks on there. Probably no need. So that's looking real good, I think. So the next thing I want to do is to put the serrations on. And I was very hesitant in deciding whether or not to do the serrations in this video or just let you watch one of the other videos. But so that this video is a standalone, I guess I will go ahead at least do uh, the serrations uh, or teeth, sometimes called teeth, like in a vice jaw, any old bench vice, just a gripping surface. And I did samples. This is 30 degrees and this is 40, 45 degrees. I think I like the 45 just a little bit better. You can do it on the shaper if you have one, although I actually do recommend the Bridgeport Mill. So, I'll put the dimensions down there as far as the depth. Well, I'll talk about that when I get over to the mill. The depth of the teeth 
and the distance between the grooves or lines or serrations. Now if you haven't done this before, I recommend you do it on some scrap because you've already got some time invested here and you hate to goof it up at this point. I think most of the free world knows that I would rather take a beating, a flogging, a lashing such as this over tilting the head on the Bridgeport Mill and then triming it in and for some reason this almost looks pleasurable compared to tilting the head and when this guy's done with me there's four more in a row and what's with the look on this guy's face alright let's go on over to the mill Okay, the head is set at 45 degrees. The damage has done. That is the end of this part. I'll see you in the next part for some serious serrating. So long for now.